Uh, ladies and gentlemen, yes, as I had already promised that today we are answering a question and the question we are answering, you can already see it here. Today we want to demonstrate how the word of God should guide our lives. How the word of God should make us wise to understand the will of God. How we should train our lives to live under the guidance of the Lord and to do the, the Lord's will against our will. And the question is, somebody asked me, Pastor, is it sin for a woman to wear in trousers? Is it sin for a woman to wear in trousers? Before I use my knowledge and understanding, I pray, let us seek the Lord's spirit to guide us as we tackle this question. Join me in prayer. Lord Father, we thank you for today. And we pray that as we have come to study the Bible and to teach the world of your righteousness, Lord, bless us. Let your Holy Spirit speak. Convict us of truth in righteousness. We are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, the question is, is it sin for a woman to wear in trousers? Answer, let the Bible speak. I have my two young ladies here, nice looking as you can see them. Today I came to you that we may make the word of God to be practically demonstrated. Most of the time we hide ourselves in our own comfort zones. We hide our heads inside the sun and we don't look at the truth. And when we are not looking at the truth, we assume the truth is also not looking at us. But we can never run away from the truth. Nobody can ever change the truth. Nobody can ever go against the truth. Because yes, truth is the truth. And the standard of truth is the Bible and the Bible alone. Your will is not the truth. Fashion and those Foreign cultures we copy on TV and social media will never stand to be truth. But the word of God is the principle and the sole standard of the truth. So, today we have a question to answer. For me to answer this question today, I need to answer it basing on one, culture. Two, the word of God. Three, common sense. Let us start with culture. What does our culture suggest, more especially with the Ugandans here? Let us drop down to Uganda. What does the culture here in Uganda, how does it suggest? Let us go down to our religion. What does the culture of our religion suggest that a woman should dress like? In Uganda, if a kabaka or the king of Uganda invited you younger lady or you man, if the king of Uganda invited your wife, how would she dress of the two compared here? Mm -hmm. If it was your mother, younger lady, coming to visit you at school, coming for your wedding, mm -hmm, it is your mother, it is, your day, it is the day for your introduction. How would you wish your mother to come dressed like? Like this? Or like this? What is our culture here in Uganda and in Uganda? Point number one. Common sense. What does common sense tell you? As a human being with a working brain, what does common sense speak to you that a woman should dress like? Common sense just... Okay, let us assume common sense is not common. Another point to consider, what does the word of God say? The question is, is it sin for a woman to dress in trousers? Listen carefully. Let us consider the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5, the Bible says, that the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination before the Lord. Let me first put the Bible down. In the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5, God has demonstrated it very well that 
a man shall not wear a woman's garment. If you find me wearing this, that is sin. And he says, a woman either shall not wear a man's garment. It is a sin for a woman to wear in trousers. It is a sin before God. And God has said that all those women that wear men's clothing are abomination before the Lord. All these men who wear in women's clothing are abomination before the Lord. Because according to our culture here in Uganda, now when we talk of Uganda, we mean Western Uganda, Eastern Uganda, Central Uganda, South Uganda, North Uganda. We don't have any culture for a woman to put on like this. We only know this culture from prostitutes. I'm very and so considerate of and with my words. This is not our culture in dressing. No. We know this culture for prostitutes. It is now so absurd to find a pastor's wife wearing in this th skimmy thing. It is so absurd to find a man's daughter wearing in this skimmy thing. It is so absurd to find somebody's wife, to find my sister wearing in this skimmy thing, exposing the whole body. I want you to see, is it godly common sense? Just apply your common sense. Is it godly for this person to dress like this? This is the umbilical cord. It is out. These are the breasts. They are protruding out. Look. And now this is the look. This is the look of how your pastor's wife, of how your daughter, of how your mother, of how your aunt, of how your sister is designed. And then you younger men who have not studied, who have not conformed to the will of God, you tell them that sister, you are very smart. That sweetheart, you are very smart. But this dress code, God says she is an abomination before the Lord. What does it mean? When Christ comes, remember, the book of, the, of Revelation, Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. The Bible says, Jesus says, that behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his works shall be. This woman will be rewarded with destruction. Why? She has moved naked. She has seduced men into sexual lust. She has moved the body that God granted her with. You can see. Everything is naked. This is not the dressing up. This woman is naked. And the question is, is it sin for a woman to wear in trousers? God has said, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 that it is not only sin but it is an abomination this is the proper way a woman should dress like when a woman dresses let the, her body parts not be seen let her body be well covered that is the reason as to why we dress up as you see me here dressed okay I tried carefully to cause all my body parts to be well covered. I'm not dressed to be smart before you. I'm dressed to be smart before the Lord. On, who, on whose glory I move. Whose glory I'm responsible of. To go and distribute before everybody. Not forget. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter. Chapter 10 verse 31. What does it say? That therefore, in everything, whether you eat or you drink, do all for the will of God, for the glory of God. This woman, whether you dress, whether you eat, you must dress up for God's glory. Let me tell you one secret thing. Young lady, oh my dear brother, if you have your wife or your sister, she dresses up and you hear people say that you are dressed and you look sexy. 
That means she is ready to have sex. No wonder women get raped most of the times. It is because of this kind of dress code. And today, some religions have led these people to enter in church. They consider that God only judges the heart. I want to tell you, what you do on top describes what is inside your heart. A woman, if you are outside there, and more especially if you are a Ugandan, because I only know and I'm well acquainted with the Ugandan culture. Here in Uganda, here in Uganda, and other regions of Uganda, dressing up like this, you are an abomination. And this is a sin before God. Where did we get these things from? From America, from Germany, from France. We have neglected our own cultures here. We have coped and adopted to foreign cultures. Which cultures? We don't know how they came up about. The culture of Ugandans, we are people who fear the Lord. Okay? The motto here in Uganda says that for God and my country, in Uganda, God number one. Listen carefully. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. The Bible says that and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said unto him, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Listen carefully. When you are naked, you hide yourself from the Lord. I want to tell you this person here, God cannot see. Why? This person is naked and this person has already hid her heart from the Lord. Therefore, if this is your sister, if this is your wife, if this is your mother, if this is your aunt, if this is your pastor's wife, if you are a pastor and these are your church members, they are already hidden from the presence of the Lord. I call upon all African women. I call upon all Ugandans. I call, I call upon all women, girls, ladies who have the fear of the Lord in them, who believe they were created and designed by God. Whenever you dress up, don't dress up to kill, don't dress up to look sexy, but rather dress up to give glory and honor unto the Lord. Remember, Adam. After sinning, they made for themselves a cloth and they covered some few parts of their bodies. Like you see this woman, a few parts of her body are halfway covered. You can see. She's naked all over. But when God came and called them back, he made a cloth and clothed all of them. Like this. Like you see, I am all well dressed. I am dressed not to look smart before you, but I'm dressed for God's glory. I'm not dressed to kill. I'm not dressed to look sexy. I'm dressed to uplift God's name and his glory to be seen. It is a sin for a woman to wear in trousers. Deuteronomy chapter 5, chapter 22 verse 5 says it is an abomination for a Ugandan African woman according to our culture to wear in trousers. If you go to America, they have a different culture. If you go to Germany, different culture. If you go to Scotland, men dress up in skirts, Scotland. Men dress up in skirts in Scotland. And to them it's not sin. It is their culture. Our culture here in Uganda, here in Uganda, it is to dress up majestically for God's glory. To appease the people who see us, to respect us and honor us because we look smart before God and before men. May God bless you. And may we all pray that these foreign cultures that have taken us away from our culture and God is glory from our humanity. May God forbid and we pray for God is grace to come and cover us up. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for today. And bless your people who have understood this study. Convict and convince us to stop this evil form of dress codes. Rather, put on for your glory because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. I love you so much.